So if you are all here, we start. So this is the book and I keep repeating. I am one of the co-authors there now. Okay. Uh, we have been discussing yesterday about the bipolar transistors. We shall continue with that. I think something we uh, started with a typical BJT. So the basic equations we wrote last time and very important for us that the emitter current is always sum of base current and collector current and this is stems from the physics that whatever is injected from the emitter side partly recombines in the base and the rest goes to collector and because of that uh, base current plus collector current must be equal to the emitter current. Okay. We also said that the collector current if you are in the active region of the transistor active means where the base emitter junction is forward biased uh, at least greater than 0.65 volts and the base collector junction is reverse biased sufficiently enough then we say you are in a active mode of a transistor okay and in that mode we say ic equal to alpha times ie or essentially ic is equal to beta times ib this is the law only followed when the transistor in active mode if transistor is cut off mode when the both junctions are reverse biased then none of the uh, uh, junctions are conducting or reverse currents are only flowing so you may say transistor is in off state. Wondering if base emitter junction is not conducting and base collector junction is also reverse bias uh, sorry base emitter junction is forward bias but base collector junction is also getting forward bias then both collector will emit as well as emitter will emit carriers in the base there will be a huge base current conversely saying if there is a huge base current the transistor will enter saturation is that clear that is the theory which we learned earlier hopefully so. Okay. So in our analog course we will neither work on cutoffs nor work on saturated states okay. we will see saturation is limit for us. So we will see only work in normal active mode, normal mode or active mode when base collector junction is reverse biased base emitter junction is forward biased. So all our analog theory assumes that if not we will tell you what has happened otherwise okay. and then we say in case you are more interested in physics oh there is a leakage current coming from uh, IC and everything so ICO is the current so essentially what it says even if emitter junction is switched off that is VB on is negative then the base collector current can still flow through base and collector junction and therefore that is the ICO okay that is exactly what that leakage current is about. So more accuracy can be built in case but in circuits let us look at situation something like this unless said otherwise the typical current will be milliamps and typical reverse saturation current will be in picoamps. So adding something tens of amps milliamps to a few nanoamps or few picoamps uh, numerically does not matter for us okay that is how we are physics wise if you say you get out you know something some will shout at how can it happen transistor will never work then so that is not our idea idea here is number and therefore to some extent uh, we will bypass such a certain values in case but in case your IC is very small then our I is very small when it just starts on yeah those that current may add actually. So let us take a case unless said otherwise we will neglect small currents but you may write and then neglect saying oh I cannot add. So in my circuit we normally do not believe too much these numbers are great. We also said other day that the collector emitter junction or collector emitter voltage from one node collector to emitter difference is always equal to because at one node there cannot be two voltages. So if you go through this loop or you go through this loop so VB plus VBC must be equal to VC at any cost. Now that is exactly we will see when the saturation starts something VC must go down so that VB and VBC must go opposite that is why both junctions get forward bias therefore VB, my VBC will become opposite subtract out of VB or opposite this and VC will fall actually otherwise it will always add otherwise VBC plus VBC this will always add to get VC. So if VCB is 2 point some volt VB is 0 0.7 volt so VC will be 2 points and volts is that clear in normal active mode these two voltages VB and VBC will always add to make your VC is that clear normal active mode. So this is something we said last time 
Now we go ahead and we did something more also. We also showed you some figure. We are interested in small signals. So we said okay, this the model so far we talked are called large signal models. Okay. The device is swinging uh, in inputs too high and sometimes may not reach into uh, it may enter saturation mode. So we must take care. And we say our symbolization is capital I small b is equal to small i b plus capital I b, which essentially says the total base current is equal to AC current base current plus DC base current. And similarly, for all, similarly, you can also write for voltages. Uh, for example, I may write, uh, maybe sorry, I may write B B E is equal to B B E plus. That is the total base emitter voltage is DC emitter uh, base emitter voltage plus AC emitter base voltage. So you can always say that the DC part plus the AC part is equal to the total current, and that's our symbolization. Nothing very great. Nothing. Just to say, how do we take numbers or how do we express things? We also said if I plot the output characteristic IC versus VC for a bipolar transistor uh, for different base currents, uh, the slope of this characteristics is such each for each IB if we extrapolate them on the minus VC axis right now all of us are talking only of NPN transistors. The polarities will change just opposite of that if we talk of PNP transistors. So normally PNPs will not be used as compared to NPN. Why? Anyone? Okay. Uh, you said it, but uh, if I say you are wrong, or at least on face you are wrong, why do I say so? The reason why I say so the current in a semiconductor is there are two kinds of current transport we have discussed. I hope so. One is called the drift current, the other is called the diffusion current. The drift current is velocity proportional to velocity, that is mu e. So current is proportional to electric field and the mobility available to you. But in the case of bipolar transistor, the transport is diffusion limited. You are injecting the majority carriers from emitter into a minority, they become minority in the base because that is opposite polarity. Electrons become minority in the base, is that clear to you? And they diffuse, they do not drift there, they actually diffuse. Since there is no diff, uh, drift part there mobility should not come into picture it is a diffusion term which should come. But you are not wrong why I will say but in face you should not say so okay it is the diffusion limitation limited current which is gradient proportional okay how the gradient it creates j is proportional to dn by dx or dn delta if you are saying 3 dimension. So essentially dn term by Einstein relation is related to kt by q into mu okay. Since d is proportional to mu, you are not wrong, but essentially that is not correct because physics says it is proportional to the, it is a current is diffusion limited and not drift limited. So, you should always say that it is a diffusion limited current, the gradients are such that it always will dominate. You have very large emitter uh, source here and you have very few electrons the other side in the base p type NPN, is that correct? Since so they create a huge gradient, the current flows. Is that correct? So you are right to some extent that dn is larger compared to dp's, and there also is the gradients normally because of the available doping of NNP in actual technology. The n channel or NPN currents will be larger for the same area, same biasing compared to pn. Your statement of it was not wrong. Why I said because fortunately d is proportional by Einstein relation to mu. Okay, but otherwise the phenomena wise it is not correct okay. So to say okay so normally NPN transistor will be preferred as far as we are concerned for because same area same everything I will get larger current from the same everything. So fair you know jitna jada profit that is what we are looking for. However uh, I leave it to you for you to think later maybe at the some way I may ask you query. PNP transistors are never out many circuits still need a PNP. Why? There must be something in PNP which makes it a first choice over NPN. 99 cases, amplifying cases, everywhere you will use NPNs. 
but certainly some circuits, some blocks are they have put a PNC. Why do they say? Think of it. If you cannot find in a book, if you cannot get to your friends and find, you come to me someday. I'll tell you why. Okay, but otherwise, NPNs will be normally used. Okay. So we will not discuss too much about PNP. Not that it is bad device or the worst device or something. Because of advantages, even fabrication, I may tell, NPNs are much easier to fabricate compared to PNPs. Compared, I don't mean very large difference in fabs. So these all characteristics of NPNs, and the, if you extrapolate all of them, they end up in a single point, and that voltage we call it early voltage. And this is essentially telling that the base emitter junction, or sorry, base width is getting punched. Depletion layer from base collector junction touches the base emitter junction, and short circuit can occur. That's the early voltage. That's why current is infinite. In fact, okay. But since the device will become infinite, we will actually shut it off at that point. And there is a limiter as we say and therefore no current will be allowed then. Okay. Uh, this is what I think I did. Let us do now what is our actual work for the day. We are interested in small signals. I kept telling you why because the slope of V0, V in characteristic, what did I say? It falls sharply. What is dv0 by dv in, in your opinion? dv0 by dv in. What is it? No, no, no. <laughs> Think of it, Baba. I said, Bolne. v0 v in. This is a device. I am putting v in. I am getting v o. v0 by v in is essentially the gain. If I see a normal transfer characteristics of a NMOS or CMOS or bipolar transistors, inverters or amplifiers, only in this region of VN you have large dv0 by dvn that is gain is only available in a small range of inputs. This side gain may be 0, this side also gain may be 0, is that correct? So we cannot use an amplifier in regions where there is no gain, then why I call it amplifier? And therefore, we must operate within this range of DC values and therefore signal should not exceed either side of let us say if I bias here the signal which I put here should not cross these two points any day because otherwise you will get into gain 0 kind of stage or much lower gains at those points therefore the amplifier will not act like a good amplifier is that clear. So small signal is not that I, I want or I do not know I cannot do better and therefore that is the limit which I will always try to follow. However, all said and done, this is fine. Uh, we will like to see what parameters we shall be using in our circuit. The first and the foremost parameter, someone said wrongfully, but now it is correct, is the transconductance. Transconductance word says uh, current divided by voltage is the conductance. What is in the output of a transistor? Collector current. What is the input of a transistor? Base emitter voltage, there where the signal is going to be applied. So, what do we say? Change in collector current for the change in base emitter voltage is called transconductance. Okay, is that clear? Of course, VB is related to IB also. How? IC to the power QVB by NKT, this is a diode. So, VB is related to. I B directly in a diode and therefore we need not talk current, we should talk about base emitter voltages as our inputs where signals will be actually applied with this, is that okay? So because of that we say change in collector current to the change in base emitter voltage is GM. If I take delta I C of this, I can write delta IC as DIC by DVB into del. This is partial equation, simple, right? Change in IC to the change in VB will be DV, DI by DV. This is how you write partial terms, okay? Or delta IC, this is GM times delta VB. So we say delta IC is what? Change in IC is what? The AC current, total current is DC plus AC. If I subtract DC part, so what is change is the AC part. So we say delta, capital delta IC is nothing but AC components. So we say small IC, 
small ic is gm times small vbe this is a very important relationship for us what is it trying to tell okay we may draw a little figure here i don't know you know i am a left hander and it becomes difficult for me to keep doing like this so if this is your base junction this is your emitter value this is your collector let's say i am grounding this so voltage here ac voltage here is vb okay so if i see the collector current here it is gn times is that okay so the collector current which i'll see at the output side is essentially gm times the input signal at the base emitter side is that correct this is what amplifier is going to do now if this ic current flows through a resistor ic times that r rl will be the output voltage is that correct so if i apply a resistance here which is say load then the v0 is essentially minus ic rl okay why minus because our current is gm vb is opposite sign so it is minus ic rc but ic is proportional to ib through what term ic and ib are related by what term beta so i can write v0 is minus beta 0 i b times r l okay beta b now i can say what is pb then what is input value you say i also know a oh sorry r l okay v0 is i c r l and v b let's say put a small resistance here so i b times r i is equal to vbe let's say there is a resistance here ri so ri times ib is your vbe so if i substitute here i can get v0 by vbe is equal to minus beta 0 rl by is that okay just substitute ib from here and collect the terms is that correct and what is v0 by vb gain ac gain ac gain is that correct ac gain so a transistor has amplified uh, your input voltage to a output voltage v0 and it can be evaluated if i know the beta of a transistor i know the load i have substituted if i know my input resistance is that clear is that clear so if i choose rl greater than ri and if my beta is large enough 50 100 to 100 then i am certainly going to get sufficient gain from this amplifier is that correct so a small signal of the value of microvolt to millivolts can get into at least few volts at least should not be greater than power supply but at least few volts and that's what amplification i can achieve of course this is a proportion to rl by ri the whole circuit theory which will now apply is to get to used to this how do i adjust this rl by ri to get different kinds of amplifier this is all that i'll do so basic circuit will remain is this i have a base in emitter input signal and i'll get output current this is my basic thing because that's what amplifier uh, uh, transistor tells me this is what i'm going to use in my circuit analysis why do i want to do all this circuit equivalence of that because in real life if i am really solving equations and i write i is equal to i s e to the power q v by n k t and if i write this kind of non linear equations or transcendental equations are difficult to solve analytically numerically maybe yes and every time even numerically take long time to solve so we say okay why do you want to do this anyway we are looking at small signals so we will e put an equivalent of something there which represents the actual currents anyway is that clear So all that we are doing is putting an equivalent of what physics is telling in our so that circuit can be easily solved. And which equations we'll use in circuits? Two Kirchhoff laws, maybe two more Thevenin's and Norton's equivalents, and nothing more than that is needed to solve any of the circuit in this case. 
Of course, I will give you some hints. Uh, one is called the hint without solving, you can give the results. Okay. There are methods it's called observation. Oh, this must have this. Not be accurate, but that may be sufficient to tell you, okay, it has a gain or it has something so much. So, how to choose that and how to get that values can be found, but generally circuit is very simple. What are how many loops you have? One loop here and one loop here, that is very simple to solve, or two nodes, whatever way if you want a nodal equation solver or you want the current mesh equation solver, you can solve either way. Is that clear? So, four equations are all that we need to do analog circuit analysis. Two Kirchhoff laws and two one of the uh, Thevenin's equivalent theorem and Norton's equivalent theorem, nothing more and nothing less. Of course, there is one more theorem. Uh, have you done any course in networks so far? Okay, good. Which is Telligan's theorem. Hmm? So some other day when it will come, we will come to you why why Telligan was so great. Okay. Okay. Uh, just now I said I C the collector current is equal to I s some proportion e to the power v v by v t. Uh, this is from the theory of a transistor. So, if I if I want to have a definition of g m, I know d i c just now I wrote an equation of uh, g m delta i c by delta v b e. So, I do this, I differentiate this equation okay that is what I said. So, I will differentiate and if I differentiate I differentiate this and I get I s by V t exponential V b by V t. This is again I c current. So, it is I c by V t. Uh, by the way, this V t will now onwards that is why I wrote ahead. V t is thermal voltage and since few minutes after we are going for MOSFET, there V t the turn on voltage is very important for a threshold volt. We will not confuse with this. So, we say okay onwards may be use k t by q. Okay, so it is I C upon K T by Q. So Q I C by K T. So do you find something interesting? On the left side, G M is what parameter? A C or D C? A C delta. We have said it's A C parameter. On the right, Q I C by K T. I C is the D C current. Is that correct? I C is the D C current. So are you now thinking that the D C current, where the transistor is going to be biased, is going to decide? So, AC parameter transconductance is that point clear? This is the most important fact we must know. The DC by that is why I say biasing word I said the capital IC is going to decide the AC transconductance of the tra amplifier okay and that is most important for us. So, if I say I am biasing the circuit for a 1 milliamp DC current am I not directly give you gm if I say temperature at which we are if we do not specify any temperature 300 degree Kelvin is what we assume otherwise in some books may they use 25 degree centigrade some use 27 degree centigrade. So, assume that normally calculations can be performed to 300 degrees Kelvin typically 27 degree centigrade but if some are using 25 degree centigrade then kt by q will be 26 millivolts if you are using uh, 300 or uh, 27 degree it will be slightly 26 point something okay. So, average we may use kt by q is 26 millivolt which as a number is not okay even if you decide to use 25 fine but use same number everywhere okay kt by q is 25 millivolt or 20 do not write 25.8 26.43 20, no use why I say you in circuits these numbers do not matter very much at the end of the day okay. So, I already said it is roughly 26 millivolt is what kd by q i is going to use and let us say if i c is 1 milliamp which you are biasing then the gm is around 38 milliamps per volt. Please remember gm must not be given or must not be without units it almost always be specified as amps by volts okay. Can you tell me gain should be specified, the voltage gain should be specified by how? V0 by Vn, how should I specify this number? AV, volt by volt, is that clear? Please write volt by volt, is that clear? Why we say so? Because I am going to give you 4 gains later, okay. 
some may be bold by i v by i some i by v i by i so i want to be very clear to people that i must specify the units of gain v by v or whatever way i am doing i must specify though unit wise we may say v by v is no because it's an same unit actually but we must write in analog circuit even if it is both sides same units is that clear this is some symbolization for correct thinking so this is the typical gm which i am going to get 38 milliamp per volt this is the transconductance how will it increase or decrease only one expression written here na either the biasing current increases or the temperature increases oh sorry decrease temperature decrease okay so please take it that these are therefore very difficult to ic of course i will control but ic is limited by what just to get what is the way we started ic is equal to beta ib hmm? so if i keep increasing ib ic will start increasing because beta times but i say don't increase too much what do I, what is the reason i said it may be saturation and then there is no amplification both junctions get forward biased okay therefore ic will reach some maximum is that correct so you cannot go beyond that you cannot reduce temperature to liquid nitrogen or liquid helium how can you operate you will not see the device any time okay even your wires may not function at liquid i mean uh, liquid helium temperatures because the conductivity of wire may not be remain at zero or maybe infinite also no no it may become otherwise in some materials so one cannot operate circuits in a of course in specific areas in satellite we do cooling as well as heating whenever we need but normally circuits will be open okay and therefore we should not we cannot play too much on the temper in the contrary we may have worries because temperature will keep rising and because temperature is rising your gm will start falling that means gain will start falling and that's my major worry okay so i must control my temperature as much as possible is that clear that's the worry which we need okay okay uh coming back to okay so this expression you are written qic by kt there are certain limitation which i only anyway i have already said but i may repeat little little more detail here i have already said saturation ho jata hai na chalo saturation nahi bhi hua where are we uh, you know like this transfer characteristics we may not be here we may be here here also gain is less because slope is much smaller here the slope is larger so now we are in a smaller this and we are moving other side now okay now here is the case if i add if i add a input ac signal along with the dc vd what is it it is superimposed or modulated i add an ac signal over a given dc value that in my hand i fix vd wherever i want then add a signal over in the input side okay this is an npn transistor so i believe if i change vb the actual vb will be vbe plus v in because we have added input signal to the dc value of vbe then the collector current total will be is exponential dc plus ac by kt right now my assumption is that n factor is 1 therefore in real life the diode ideality factor also come but right now assume n is 1 okay and someone should so nkt hota hai ha hota hai n bhi hota hai but abhi hamare circuit mein sab chal raha hai okay so if i say this is the total current and if i take the dc it is ic is equal to is exponential vbe by vt no vn added so this is dc this is total so what is ac part in that Yeah, so this total part is therefore IC times V in by V. Just substitute here, so you get total IC is equal to DC IC times exponential V in by V T. Is that okay? This term substitute in this. Okay, so you get IC, which is this term, IS exponential Q V B by K T is IC. the remainder term is exponential v in by vt exponential you can always e to the power a into e to the power b a plus b is that correct the formula which i use is exponential okay 
So I get I C exponential V in my V and here is that condition which I have say other condition why small signals are required. This is exponential term V in by V T. Let us say V in is smaller than V T. Okay, input signal is smaller than 26 millivolts. Is that correct? V in by less than V T. I expand this exponential function. What is the way exponential function is expanded? 1 plus x on upon factorial 2 x square plus 1 over factorial 3 x cube and so on and so forth. So if I expand this term, I get 1 plus v in by v t half v in by v t square plus factorial 3 means 6 1 by 6 v in by v t cube plus so on and so forth higher terms. Is that clear to you? Is that clear to you? What do I say? I just expanded this exponential function in the series form. Okay. If you now say and we also know the small AC current is total AC, IC minus TC IC. So you see from here, if I subtract this IC minus IC, 1 plus 1 will cancel, 1 will go away because IC will subtract. So if I do that, I get IC is equal to IC by VT times V in plus half IC by VT square V in square plus 1 by 6 IC by VT cube V in cube and so on and so forth. Is that clear? AC current, how many terms I am getting? First is the major term which is first order term, this is second order term, this is third order term and there will be n order terms if we, now you can see if your V in is closer to V t, what will, what does that mean or larger than V t, the second order, third order terms will start increasing or even dominating. Is that correct? Is that point clear? So now you are trying to say that if that happens, the gain should really increase because you are getting more and more terms out of it. But really what will happen? Gain will finally go to 0. Okay. So what is the condition that this only term comes to our requirement which is called the fundamental term, V in should be very very small compared to V t. Then these two terms and all higher order terms can be if V in by V t is smaller, much smaller than 1, then we can say the second order, third order, nth order terms are negligible. Is that clear? Is that clear? If that happens IC is equal to IC by VT times VN, then the GM is IC by VN, therefore it is QIC by KT and if you want therefore this GM equivalent circuit to stand which we did earlier, condition is what? What is the condition on input signal? It should be smaller or much smaller than 26 millivolts, is that clear? Two ways I explained you. One is from the transfer character, I say no, you will get harmonics out. Even with without that, I say normal thinking. I can prove that I cannot exceed too many because remember, V will be sin omega t. Okay, sin square omega t means two omega t means omega one plus omega two omega one minus third order terms will start appearing. Is that correct? So you must understand. In this, there is only one omega t term going on, which is called fundamental. I have a signal at one frequency and I want output also at the same frequency. If the power or energy is given to other harmonics, I will not get enough power for my fundamental. So my amplification will become lower and lower and lower. Is that clear to you? So the second and third, yes. Because the biasing is such then that we always remain in that. Okay, that is exactly what it is. That is why I say biasing word is very good. That is what why we are going because I want to go to circuit quicker, but I want to make you clear that why I actually restrict myself every time. So, this is only few lectures I am taking for you modeling. So, that you know why I cannot do more or less than this. This is what is only possible for me. Is that clear? So, those limitations is only I am trying to come to. If I go out of the ranges, what you say will happen? And physically what can happen is I may actually get into power and inner energy into other frequency terms which I do not want, is that correct? They say total power is so much, if I give 80 percent to other harmonics, I am get 20 percent. So I must restrict that, is that correct? That is the idea behind it, okay, very good. 
So is that small signal word is clear why small signal, why analog people do not want to talk too much about large signals, is that okay, is that okay. So this is only to prove my points that why I sometimes do something which I say okay, yes. No, but because the output which you will put will have some RC time constant, so it will only address to those frequency, one frequency, one RC the time that is frequency. So at a given this, it will only respond to a frequency. Okay, you, what you are saying is not very absurd or wrong. If I can tune those other harmonics, that's what we say. Yeah, power can be pumped back, but then you require additional hardware to do that. Which is what in microwaves we do that. The higher harmonic terms we actually convert back to fundamental, but there is a huge circuitry to do that. Okay, so we lose power in converting back. Okay, that's the idea, but that is doable. You are right. Okay, let's look into the other things of the BJT. So far we looked into only one parameter. Which one? GM, which is our major parameter. So we say okay, पहले उसको देख लें. अभी दूसरा टर्म क्या बोला था मैंने अपना एनालॉग के लिए बैंडविड्थ इज दैट बैंडविड्थ इज समथिंग टू रिलेट विथ सम आउटपुट गेन और गेन ऑफ दिस एम्पलीफायर रिमेंस कांस्टेंट टिल सर्टेन फ्रीक्वेंसी ओके सो वी आर लुकिंग फॉर नाउ फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पांस व्हेनेवर आई गो जस्ट नाउ आई सेड टू हिम फ्रीक्वेंसी वर्ड कम्स टाइम कांस्टेंट्स आर एसोसिएटेड इज दैट करेक्ट 1 अपॉन आर सी 2 बाय आर सी इज टाइम फ्रीक्वेंसी so whenever i say frequency i am looking for rc terms okay so now i must look on to two more terms gm of course is the transconductor now i must look for r as well as c's because i am now looking for bandwidths gain I, i know gm will probably help me out okay but i also want bandwidths so i want to know how will i control that or how do i go in a small signal vn is applied as the circuit i showed you earlier then we say delta vb is small again repeating is vn delta similarly the charge which electrons will inject emitter charge qe change in emitter charge is small qe similarly is change in base charge is small qb but charge neutrality in transistor in a steady state what does it say the change in base charge should be same in emitter charge change because other what is injected cannot remain can increase their neutrality must hold So at then we will say small q b is equal to small q because neutrality has to hold. Okay, but right now I am giving separate name. Finally I say okay q b is q. Okay, but to make a point I have separated because in real physics if you have done it they will say the base cannot increase the concentration electrons in it because they must recombine because otherwise charge neutrality will be violated. Is that correct? So that term is valid here also. But just to make a point I am not changing. So we define. a capacitance which is related to base emitter junction and that is given by the change in base charge divided by input voltage q is equal to cv no great things till seventh standard physics q is equal to cv in je i don't know now because of this tick marking system otherwise we used to have many problems in this charge and capacitance gauss's law you know point to point at least in older je in our time there were huge problems in electrostatics i don't know how much part now in your newer je is what is the purpose in newer je to get 8000 people okay earlier we used to reject beyond 400 only so 6 7600 must go okay so thoda rejection system pehle zyada tha ye thoda selection system hai okay good now we say the change in emitter or ch emitter charge is nothing but the current times time or q by t is current is that correct charge by time is current so emitter current which is received at the collector side through a transit time which is called base transit time remember electrons are injected at base emitter junction transit through the base are collected so there is a finite time which we say base transit time transit time please say it's not minority carrier time what is it called transit time time taken from here to here base transit time so whatever received is collector current so collector current to base transit time must be the charge injected from the capacitor okay uh, 
So similarly we can also say delta q e is tau b time delta i c. Why is this delta that I am adding? I want to make a c part in that. As soon as I add delta I get an a c value. So delta q e is equal to tau b time delta i c. Please remember I said right now here delta q e will be equal to delta q b. Why I said so? Charge neutrality hold always be held. So we are interested to know this CBE. What are we trying to do? We want to now show you equivalent circuit. So any component which will change my bandwidth of the gain, I must find. So this is first thing. After GM, I want to see the capacitance. So delta Q E is tau B times delta I C. Is that okay? Is that okay? You just say otherwise. I'll wait till you write. Okay. Delta Q E is tau b times delta ic now this tau b in devices is what anyone remember device theory last semester we related to what abhi bola na maine yaar we just think of it this is my base base width yahan se aaya yahan le gaya ye time hai kya kis pe depend karega base width Larger the base width, larger is the transit time. Smaller the base width, smaller is the transit time. Is that correct? Is that correct? So obviously tau b must be related to base width. Okay, is that okay? Since I say delta q e is same as delta q b, so delta q e is equal to delta q b is delta i c tau b, or q b is i c times tau b. And therefore, the CBE, which is called, by the way, this CBE is called diffusion capacitance. What is it called? Diffusion capacitance. Why it was called diffusion capacitance? It's related to diffusion phenomena of carriers in the base. Is that correct? So it is called diffusion capacitance. It is not a junction capacitance which we have to calculate so far. It's only a carriers moving. charge is changing any change in the charge means capacitive effect is there that's why charge changes is that q is equal to cv so if charge changes there is a capacitance and since charge is a proportional to the voltage as i apply therefore capacitance is varying term okay so cbe is also sometime called c pi dash is q i c by k t in tau b and what is tau b now W B square by 2 d n. W B is the base width. So smaller the base width, smaller is tau B. Smaller is tau B. Smaller is C B. C B is between base and emitter. So what will happen if C B is smaller? What will happen for a lower frequency? What is the impedance it will offer if C B is smaller? For lower frequency, omega is smaller. CB is smaller. Impedance is very high. If this impedance, as seen from the input side, is high, what does that mean? Equivalently saying, is it important or not important? If input input impedance across two terminals is very high, is it is it important or not important? Not important. It's like an open circuit, it does not play games. Is that correct? Whatever voltage you are current applying, it will pass because it's like a high Z sitting there. However, if omega is higher and CB is lower, higher, then what will happen? Then this shunting effect will start. Short circuiting will start. If omega is larger and CB is also larger, that is the base width is long enough. Okay, then. Z in will be very small, and then whatever I will pass through this will be divided. Is that? And in worst case, if this is very very small, everything will go through. Is that correct? No divider there. Current will just go through shorts. Okay. Therefore, is that now clear why I am interested in CB? Because for my given operating signals and at frequencies. i want to see whether this capacitance will have any influence or not have influence okay so i must know the value because if i get the value then i'll say okay omega c will decide whether it is required or not required is that correct 
but I must know first what is T. Is that okay? That's the effort. Is that point clear? Why I am doing this? Because I don't know if I otherwise if I increase my input signal frequency to 100 megahertz, nothing will go to the output. Everything is here shorted out. Is that correct? So input is not allowing signal to get in. Is that correct? So I want to know what is that limitation? Am I reaching that? Okay. That's why I want to know the value of CB other or what is called the diffusion capacitor. But that's not the only capacitor there. We'll see another one. That. Is that point clear? Why I am doing this? Okay. Coming back, few more things we should like. To, we come to other capacitance, but let's see the other two major worries about it. I just now say for bandwidth, what are the important terms? I said R and C. One of the C I saw. I'll see other Cs also, but let's see R quickly first. I am also interested at the looking at between base emitter. What is the resistance offered? The same logic will go if the resistance is very small what will happen by same logic if this resistance is very very small any signal going from here will be shorted out nothing will go out go into the circuit is that correct. So what do I expect this R to be as high as possible. But I may not be able to control for variety of reasons very high value. Then at least I must know how much is this. So how much is really made available to me? At least that number I want to know. Okay, I don't mind. It is there. But how much is there? At least I should know because then only I know what is I am going to get here. Is that clear? So I must evaluate the normal input. This is not external. What which values we are calculating? Simply because the transistor sitting there. Further additionally externally what we will do will make more mischief for us but at least internally what is happening we will like to know. So we say IC is equal to beta times IB our standard active region equation IB is 1 upon beta times IB again use delta IB so we write D by DIC IC of beta. Uh, we define a AC beta as delta IC by delta IB or small IC by small IC. This is called AC beta. Is that clear to you? So far earlier, what beta we defined here? This beta and this beta are not same. That is called DC beta. What is DC beta? Capital IC by capital IB is DC beta. You apply DC signal, uh, DC voltage, and you see what is output. So the collector current divided by base current is DC value. This is DC beta. If I now substitute in this equation, I get IC by IB which is beta 0 delta IC by this. However, in this differential, if beta, DC beta is constant, please look at the case what I am saying. If DC beta is constant, this beta can come out. Is that a differential it will not be useful? Then this will be 1. So what is it trying to say? AC beta is equal to DC beta if beta is constant, DC beta is constant. So in your design or in your circuit, you must ensure if you are using same values of beta that beta is constant. Why beta can change? Can you tell me? You are done devices now. Beta can change because of the two things. Base width is correct, but I am looking from external side. You are right. Base width is major because that is the beta factor. Directly it will decide alpha t. Okay. Temperature. You are very good. It also will be limited by the currents which you are passing. Levels of current. Beta falls as current increases. As IC starts rising, the beta will start falling. Initially, as collector current rises, beta will rise. It will become constant for a great time and if you further increase IC it will start falling okay because of the emitter efficiency and transfer factor effects temperature effects beta is not constant. So where, where you should therefore operate in those IC regions where beta roughly remains constant you can use DC beta as same as AC beta and therefore operation of that is the DC biasing again is 
very very important because I do not want to always separate DC and AC delay. Is that clear? So, I am giving you why we operate only this much, this much because otherwise we are not sure what values we are actually going to get. Okay. Okay. Is that point clear? DC beta will be equal to AC beta as long as DC beta remains constant and that is the way we will actually make circuit to work. So, that AC beta value. So, if manufacturers gives you beta of 200, I do not need to recalculate what beta I should use in my analysis because I will see I will operate by my conditions that beta remains constant. Okay. The next thing which uh, we would like to know is the input resistance. I mean from this we want to know actually input resistance. What is input resistance will be input signal or AC input divided by base current there just now I have showed you. So, it is V in by IB but IB now can be written as IC by beta and now beta can be beta 0 or beta DC whatever you wish because we have made sure that beta is same for both cases. Is that clear? So, if I substitute IB by IC by beta like this, but what is uh, V in by IC by V in just have defined earlier first term first parameter GM IC by V in is GM. So, it is beta 0 by GM is that and GM is related to what I said which by uh, thing in DC I am connected to collector current DC collector current. I know the bias current, I know GM. I know GM and if I am ensuring you beta DC same as beta 0, the transistor will tell you what is beta. So, I know my beta, I know where I am operating, therefore I know my GM. So, I also know my input resistance R pi, is that clear to you? R pi is equal to beta by GM or to say this is very sacrosanct relation, beta is GM R pi beta is gm r pi this is a very good relation for all ac analysis for transistors is that correct conditions why we said dc ac constant otherwise we have to work if i now substitute gm and r pi values as we did one can show from the way i have written here r pi is nothing but kt by q i b so whatever your base current which is proportional to IC by IC by beta is IB. So, if you know your base current, you also know your input resistance, is that correct? Or if you know your bias current IC and you know beta, which is saying IB is known, you know your input resistance R pi, is that clear? So, R pi is not a constant quantity, it is variable. What, with what it is varying? The biasing current. So, is that point got into all of you that bias current? No, 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 no. Anything add you do it, it will cannot be added across the junction internally. How do I get inside the junction? Transistor ke andar to aap haath nahi dal sakte. Bahar. Terminal mein across kya ga? To bahar se lagayen to aur kam jada ho, kam hi ho jayega. Anything you put a parallel to this will be lesser than this. Is that clear? So externally andar ki chiz ko haath nahi lagayen. Ek baar package mila, khatam. So, I must know what is in that is the idea is that clear. If I have a what you are saying in a way is that during your fab yes I can do something, but once I fab it that is the end that is the fixed value. Whatever dopings I used whatever process I go through that will be fixed for you. I cannot do anything on that beta I kar diya man base width fix kar diya base emitter junction ke doping fix kar diya time transit time fix kar diya. Uh, minority carrier lifetime fix kar diya sab fix ho gaya mere haath mein kuch nahi externally it's going to spoil something but that's what the limit is coming this is internally itself creating a problem so first we must like to say what is internal to us and then equivalent circuit when we will make the transistor will be replaced by all this together and then externally we will put whatever we are actually getting in a circuit and then solve whole of it is that point clear why i am doing it I want to represent this transistor as if it is in a circuit form, okay. Otherwise, I cannot write IC is so much cosec HW by LB plus part H something. That equations I cannot write for transistors, okay, in circuit. So, I want to put everything in circuit form. 
So, this is also one value which I want to know equivalently there. Okay. Very good. The second uh, parameter to us is R0. Okay. What is it? Output resistance. I mean, input dekha na. Let us see at the output side what is the resistance I am saying. That circuit which we did uh, GM DBE. ये कलेक्टर है एक यहां भी आर जीरो ये शंटिंग क्यों होगा वाई टू बी शंटिंग वट इज दिस क्या है ये करंट सोर्स है उसका एक रेजिस्टेंस शंट होगा उसके आगे हाँ तो वी वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट इज दिस बट कैन यू कन्वर्ट इन टू सीरीज काइंड विच थ्योरम नॉट एन थ्योरम से थेवन इन में जाओ जी एम टाइम्स आर जीरो वो करके आर जीरो उसके इक्वलन आर भी निकाल सकते हो बट राइट नो वी आर ओनली इन द नॉट एन इक्वलन साइड ओके सो आई वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट इज दिस सो कॉल्ड आउटपुट रेजिस्टेंस फ्रोम आर जीरो सो आई सेड ओके जस्ट नो आई डेट डेल्टा आई सी इज डेल्टा बी सी इन टू डेल्टा बी सी ओके डेल्टा आई सी कैन बी रिटर्न इन ए इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर्म है डेल्टा आई सी इन डेल्टा बी सी इन टू डेल्टा बी सी नो मैथ्स ये दोनों सेम टर्म है but we can always write like this but this term delta is vc by delta ic essentially is early voltage aapko bola tha iska jo slope hai wo early voltage hai so va by ic iska jo slope hai wo early voltage divided by ic is that point clear is that point clear so if i specify to you the early voltage 20 volt 50 volt then what and i am saying i am biasing at this bias current of ic what i am giving you r0 value is that clear is that clear if i am specifying early voltage this is 50 volt transistor has a early voltage of 50 volt okay and if i say i am biasing at 1 milliamp so kitna r0 bola 50 by 1 milliamp 50 kilo ohms so i i as soon as i know my bias current i am actually telling what is r0 i am using okay so please remember every time which term i am connecting everything to the biasing current is that point clear everything i am connecting to biasing current so what is important in analog circuit design or in analysis where you are at ic which value of ic you are operating at that decide everything for you is that okay is that okay ic is the main dc ic is the major parameter for us to get so that we know what is the final circuit equivalent we are going to get is that clear okay so any time i early voltage is given to you which we will specify to you 20 volt 30 volt 40 volt 100 volt can be even 100 volts is it good or bad if it is 100 volt नहीं गुड तो है नंबर बड़ा इसलिए नहीं वट इज द रीजन आई सेट यू आर राइट लार्जर द अर्ली वोल्टेज गुड फॉर दस वाई आर जीरो विल बी लार्जर इन ए करंट सोर्स वॉट शुड बी द पैरल रेजिस्टेंस प्रिफरेबली और आइडियली इन्फिनेट आइडियल करंट सोर्स सो लार्जर द आर जीरो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट क्लोजर द गुड करंट सोर्स यू आर गोइंग टू is that correct and that's why we will be very keen to get larger r0 if possible okay other possibility i may reduce ic but if i reduce ic what i am going to reduce gm tumhara so, gain gaya udhar se so i am worried i cannot too low too high is that limitations clear to you i mean i am i have to worry everywhere if i want this i may lose this if i want this i may lose so somewhere what do i get that's why all these theories are again brought to your front okay is that r0 clear to you va by ic normally these values will be specified to you is that okay yes ic is the collector current see your bias on this any point here actually it is va plus vc small let's say your point is taken okay you are biasing here okay sorry it's not a straight line properly so actually this value plus this value divided by this ic is the slope is that correct but what i say how much is vc will be less than power supply value few volts how much will be va 
tens and fifties or hundreds of fold. So, in calculation VA plus VC divided by that instead you can always use VA by I. Is that point clear? What he said probably I, I should have said. Is that clear? In reality slope is this, this by this na. Okay, this is little smaller compared to bigger value. So, maths, huh? maths, nothing more. Okay, there is another term which transistor people keep talking is called eta term. Okay, it is not NKT kind, it is eta, okay, and very important factor. It is decided as, it is defined as KT by Q1 upon VA where early voltage, theory we can do someday or if you wish. And if I substitute KT by Q, please do it. What is the why I write all this fun? You can directly write this KT by Q. Ek IC either lakha, ek IC upper rakh diya. Same, hai. but this is 1 upon GM, this is 1 upon R0. So, GM R0 is a figure of merit eta. GM R0 is 1 upon eta, is a figure of merit for a transistor. Is that clear to you, everyone? GM is for a given. See, IC will decide GM and IC will also decide R0. Is that correct? Therefore, GM times R0 is a figure of merit. Is that correct? It is 1 upon eta. Very important parameter in design. Not in analysis so much, just to show you how. So, I actually search transistors which has smaller etas. Okay, that means larger GM R0 terms. Is that correct? So, when I go into the so called manuals of transistors, and I am looking for higher gain bandwidths, then I should look for transistors which has higher GMR0 essentially smaller eta values. This is specified, these are all figure of merits. Okay. Is that point clear? Is that clear? This is something someday you design chip or circuit and you open a manual from a company. You should know what you should look. Okay, that is why I showed you. Okay, typically eta will be order of 10 to power minus 4 minus 5, large, large smaller the value better is GMR0. So, if you use given beta values typically R0 values which we have got here for early voltage of 100 and 1 milliamp current how much is R0? 100 kilo ohms. Okay. If it is 100 volt early voltage and 1 milliamp current 100 kilo ohm is all that you are getting across. Okay. What is your preference will be at least mega ohm or plus. Okay. So, either you look for larger VA that means essentially look for good eta value, smaller eta value 0.0004, 404, 406 kind of thing. Okay. That is the idea behind the search. Okay. The another resistance is worrying me. You know, after all, you have a base collector junction, is that correct? In a transistor, you have a base collector junction. So, if you see it between your base and collector there is a junction is that okay? Is that point clear to you what I am talking about? This is my base, this is my emitter and this is my collector okay. emitter collector base. Between these two terminals base and collector there is a junction there is a diode sitting there which is the normal operation diode will be in what operation mode? Reverse biased. A reverse biased diode, what is the IV characteristic in reverse bias? Typically if you see I versus V, very small, very small slope. Practically saturation current is the order of pico amps or lower. So, the slope is very, very low, okay, very, very low. If that is so, if I take the delta Vc by delta Ib, which is Vc by Ic by Rb, so I get R mu by same simple method, R mu is beta times R0, R mu is beta times and R0 is related to what? Early voltage by collector current, okay. So, I know this, will you think R beta is how much? not less than 100 normally. R0 is how much we calculated just now? Hundreds of kilo ohms okay. into 100. So, how much it is? Tens of mega ohms are above. So, in between 
if this resistance or mu is greater than tens of mega ohm, will it have any influence or will not have influence? Between two nodes, if I short circuit that is R is 0, everything at the input will pass to the output. If the resistance is very high, you can say as if collector is separated from the base, but it is not 0, it is not infinite resistance. So, there is a connection between output and input whether you like or you do not like. Is that clear? So, R mu may be hundreds of mega ohms or tens of mega ohms, but it exists finite value, okay. Is that point clear? So, we must know how finite is that finite value. So, that is why we calculate beta 0 times R 0 as your R mu. Where is it exist? Between collector terminal and base terminal, base collector junction reverse bias will give you a higher resistance which is called R mu. Yes. Just now I said it is a diode reverse bias diode. Capacitance kya hota reverse bias diode mein? Even a zero bias junction is called forward bias reverse bias. Even at zero bias, junction is always reverse bias. There is a built in voltage there sitting there. Is that correct? There is a built in voltage sitting there. So, the diode is even at zero bias is equivalent of because there is a depletion line intrinsically present. That value epsilon A by depletion layer width is the capacitance, epsilon A by D is capacitance. Now, the problem is if I apply larger VCB. This depletion layer will increase or decrease? Increase. That is what the bi reverse bias is. The capacitance will decrease. Is that correct? So, we say this capacitance is function of reverse bias, whatever VCB I apply. Okay. So, I say this junction capacitance is Cj0. What is Cj0? At 0 bias capacitance, that is the depletion width at 0 bias at the built in voltage. And this V is the applied reverse bias and phi 0 is called built in voltage for the junction which is kT by q ln n e n d by n r square. So, we may say for the transistor C mu is C mu 0 1 minus V C B by phi 0. This half is not very correct. Why it is not every time correct? Device theory says if it is a step junction, it is half, it is linearly graded 1 third and or 0 0.3 or something. Exponential it will be further different n values, but assume right now the way either of. So, I write n normally will be either linearly graded, exponential is always assumed linear, okay. Or actually, it is not error, it is not a exponential, the function which you get there is called complementary error function, okay. We will not look into math right now, and for that, one third is, uh, 0.3 value is or one third value for n is good enough. Okay. So, can if I am given C mu 0. I know phi 0, I know the VCB I am applying, then I can get C mu value. Is that clear everyone? This is like a diode capacitance, nothing great. Okay. So, where is that diode capacitance will sit? Where this diode capacitance will sit? It will be across R mu. Is that clear? It will be across R mu. So, you have in between base and collector there is an RC parallel RC sitting there R mu and C mu. Does that give you some value R mu into C mu is what? Frequency term or some time constant. So, input te output mein kahi na kahi time relationship hai abhi aur ye ghatak bhi ho sakta hai. Isko bolte feed forward or feed back. Idhar se idhar a sakta hai. Or either say either ja sakta hai, you know. So, we will want to know what is happening now. Earlier, what we thought input and output are separate. Now, these two have suddenly brought worries to us. Or, yeah, it is a connection. Hai. So, we must know how much is that. If this is very large impedance, so well and so good, fantastic. C mu is very small, R mu is very large, fantastic. Hmm? That is ideal. But if it is not, then how bad it is, I must know. Similarly, you can also see there is a base emitter junction is also there. What ca emitter capacitance we calculated first? CBE. 
which was a diffusion capacitor charge variation. But apart from that, the there is a base emitter junction which is forward bias. Please remember, base emitter junction is forward bias. So if I write this standard relationship like Cj is equal to Cj is zero on this, am I right? Because here Vb is not negative now, Vb is positive. So this kind of because depletion layer actually may be very very small or even negligible because you are forward biasing the base emitter zone. So normally one does not evaluate like a reverse bias diode any capacitor. I just want to show you why I did this. This is normal reverse bias capacitance calculations. We see this will be negative. This term will be positive. So C will keep falling. Is that correct? Now we say we do not know exactly what is happening because depletion will, will collapse smaller and smaller. We do not know exactly how it is not linear proportions now, not even one third, not even half loss. So we have now figured out over the experiments, hundreds of them, you can assume this CJE typically twice that of CJE0, which is 0 bias, whatever capacitance you have of that junction twice, you use it and that is good enough. This is our what is it called when you do without any great physics on that empirical by lot of measurement and lot of intuitions we figure out generally twice the CJ0 is sufficient for accuracy is that correct. So what will specify you CJ0 but when you write CJE you should multiply it by 2 okay that is the another value. So what is the input capacitance now you have you have two capacitances at the emit base emitter junction what is the first one? the diffusion capacitor. What is the second one? Junction capacitor. So the that total input capacitance is named as CBE plus CJE. Is that correct? The total input capacitance is between base and emitter is C pi. Across this is R pi. So have we taken many effects of actual transistor on the input side? We got C pi, we got R pi, we got R mu, we got C mu, we also got GM other side, we also got R0. So almost everyone is considered but few more, few quick things about this. If you see a bipolar transistor in real life, it has 4 layers and not 3 layers. We make transistor in one substrate. This is one transistor, there will be another transistor, n transistor in the same substrate. So the collector is here, base is here, emitter is here. So there is a fourth layer which is called substrate. So it is n p n and there will be p epi layer or substrate layer. So there, what, there is another junction sitting. Do you see that junction? Which is the junction? Collector substrate junction is also there. Is that correct? Normally I will short circuit substrate but still there will be reverse bias for it. Is that correct? Now that means additional capacitance is even resistance but that normally is very high. So at least CS must be calculated CJ collector to substrate capacitance which will follow like a diode law say diode. So we write CJS, CJ, CS is CS, CCS0. So whatever voltage between collector and substrate using that we must again calculate the capacitance said which is if this terminal is 0 will it go to emitter then in common emitter circuit emitter is grounded is that correct but internal emitter is not grounded there is something else is coming there. So we say this capacitance must always be grounded and not taken to emitter is that clear I just tell you what I am saying this capacitance from collector junction must be grounded independent of whatever you are because substrate is going to be grounded by us is that correct. So CCS is capacitance between collector terminal and ground is called CCS. Ho gaye sub capacitance ho gaye abhi final teen resistance reh gaye aur uske baad circuit. Say these are diffuse regions, any semiconductor will have some resistance, is that correct? Take a bar of a semiconductor or any material, rho L by A, there is a resistance sitting there, is that correct? R is rho L by A. Each region will also have some resistances of its own, is that also added to it the contact resistance of metal with that layer. 
So there is a resistance associated with emitter, resistance associated with the base and resistance associated with collector. These essentially are called RBB dash, RES and RC. Is that clear? Collector, why it is called because collector external pin to internal collector there will be a resistance, external emitter to internal emitter there is a resistance and similarly for the base. So if I use this final word for the day is this, okay this is the final circuit you can see. We start from the base, the lower side is emitter, this is external collector. So this is the end of the all that we did is the equivalent circuit of a bipolar junction transistor. So all the terms we have derived is that clear every term which I wrote here I have explained why they are coming and what will be their values okay is that clear. Only thing you should know what I just said there is a B dash, C dash and E dash term this is called internal emitter base collector points these are B, E, C are external in between there is a resistances as I shown here RBS uh, sorry RES, RBB dash and RC. Is that good? If you leave that, this is the equivalent, otherwise, the actual equivalent will be have RC, RBB dash, as well as RES. Okay. Is that okay? This equivalent circuit, wherever transistor will appear in an actual circuit, between these terminals, I will just replace this, okay, and then solve the case of law with external components connected here, 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 wherever. It is. is that correct? Some more loops, some more nodes, solving. Okay, is that okay? 